morning. Amen. First Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 13. I'm going to start reading that verse one. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to read and I want you guys to just to, just to follow along with me. Is that okay? And then I'm going to give you back some change on your time today. Okay. You can go to dinner with your mama. Go, go to <laughs> a nice place with your mama. And pay. Let your mama pay. Oh, it's two checks. It's going to be two checks. <laughs> oh, I hate when people do that. Look, I'm getting personal now. You know what? No, player. It's just one. Give it to me. That's okay. I got it. It's all right. Amen. $32. Come on. Give it. To me. I'm sorry. I'm just. I got more time than I need today, so I'm stretching it out a little bit. Uh, here we go. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says this. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am become as sounding cymbals, as tinkling brass. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith, so that I can remove mountains. If I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and I have not love, I gain nothing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory, Lord Jesus. Today, help me help them, God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Look, look at three people and say, if you ain't got love. Come on, look at somebody else. You ain't got love. You ain't got nothing. Amen. High five somebody and you can have your seat. Amen. 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 If you ain't got love. If you ain't got love. You ain't got love. You ain't got nothing. Listen, I, I want to talk to you guys today about love. Can we talk about love today? I start to start this different. I want to talk to y'all today about love. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys today about love. And I want to talk to you about love because love is one of the most misused, misunderstood, uh, incorrectly interpolated words that we use in the common in our common vernacular. Love is one of the most misused words that we have in our vernacular. You know how I know this? Because today you're gonna tell your mama you love her. But yesterday you said you love pizza. You said you love McDonald's. Girl, I love McDonald's. You said you loved a certain restaurant. You said you loved a certain type of food. You said, girl, I love this necklace. I love this dress. And what, 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 that, what that helps us to understand is that you don't know what love is. Oftentimes, I'm talking to people and they say, PD, I, I want to be successful. And I say, okay, what's success? Well, I, I, I mean, I think. <laughs> uh, PD, I, 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 I want to, I want to have, I want to fall in love. Okay, what's that look like? Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, he need to be this tall, <laughs> and love, and love doesn't come in body shapes and sizes. I just figured I would help you with that right away. <laughs> Love doesn't come in body shapes and sizes. Uh, no, 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 no. If you, and, and the truth is, and I, I want to be certainly clear about this. If you can't define it, you can't have it. There is nothing you can have in your life. You're not going to luck upon something that you can't define. If you can't define it, you can't have it. So, so there, is no, there is no way for you to actually pursue something that you, that you can't define. And most of us can't define love. What is it? What is it? For some of us, I, I'm going to get deep fast. For some of us, what you think love is, is really abuse. Wow. 
and nice words. Because he, he do it because he loved me. But some of us, what, 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 what you think love is, is just kind, ki kindness. The, and, and, and the Bible's gonna, I'm gonna be clear right here. The Bible's gonna tell us that love is kindness, but that's not all it is. Amen. It's some other stuff. Amen. And so when God saw this, said, he said, he said, how do you define love? How do we define love? God said, I, I define it like this. For I so love you that I gave. Oh, let me help you. For I so loved you, for God so loved the world. Some of y'all learned this in Sunday school. For God so loved the world that he gave. I want to help you right here. Because love always, always, always gives. You cannot have love without a response. Oh, hear me right here. You cannot have love without reciprocation. Love always, always gives. Love gives. Love gives. Janet Jackson had it right. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear your kind words. I don't want to hear how fine I am. I am fine. But what have you done for me? Okay, I'm going to get some men in trouble today. I see that. I'm not, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to help you because if you can't define it, you can't have it. And oftentimes what I find in relationships, what I find when I'm counseling people is that I have two different people on the couch and both of them are saying I'm lacking in some place or I'm not receiving what I want. But neither one of them are giving what they're expecting because somehow you think I'm, I'm supposed to get it before I give it, right? Like that's, but that's not love. Love does, if the Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world and the world loved him back that when the world gave him something, he gave the world, no. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only. Begotten means only. So we say only begotten son. Begotten means only. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Look at somebody and say, that's love. That's love. That's love. We, we, I, I want you to understand this because love is, in, in our vernacular, is a feeling. I want you to understand this because love is a feeling. But I want you to take it seriously because I need you to understand something that it's got to be more than a feeling. Love can't just be a tingle up your neck or a, ting, a tingle when you get that text message, WYD, at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's not love, that's something else. Y'all need to send y'all kids to children's church. That's not love. That's something else. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you don't know how to define it, you never will have it. So I want to define love just a little bit for you guys. And then we're going to walk through this and then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay, so there are three types of love in the Bible. Three types of love. And I, I want to break these down for you. I need you to understand it. The first type of love is this. I, I, I'm hoping we can get it on the screen. It's phila. Phila. Or some of you, it'll, it, uh, some of your Bibles will say philia, but it's 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 philia, it's philia like Philadelphia. Philadelphia means the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia is it comes from the Greek philia. Philia means brotherly love. It means friendship. It means the kind of love that, that, that makes me care about you. The kind of love that makes me uh, worry about you. That means I can't walk by you. Oh, Jesus. When I see you hurting, when I see you in your pew, and I know I can help you, but girl, I just don't have time today to deal with you. Brotherly love says, no, 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 I, I, I'm going to love you in this way. Thank you, Jesus. I know how to love you in this way because the truth is I needed love in this way, and I recognize when somebody else needs love in this way, so I'm going to be what I never had. Oh, Okay, okay. So I'm going to be what I never had to somebody. It's brotherly love. It's brotherly love that'll make a firefighter run into a house and try to pull somebody they don't know out of it. But some of y'all are spiritual firefighters. Oh, Jesus. And y'all run into situations and say, oh, no, I see you there. I see you hurting. I, I sent you a text message on yesterday. You didn't get my text message? I love you. I care about you. I want to see you succeeding. Are there any spiritual firefighters in here? It's a brotherly love. It's a brotherly love. It's the kind of love that says, I, I, I don't want bad for you. 
Even though I've been, I've had some bad done to me, I don't want it for you. That's what brotherly love looks like. It's a love, it's an affectionate regard for one another. Somebody say affectionate regard for one another. It's usually between equals. So brotherly love is not necessarily, it means that I'm above and you're beneath. It don't mean that I'm on top and you're not. So most of the time, it just means I've been where you are. Oh, well, that should have helped somebody right there. You know, sometimes you just need somebody who's been where you are. I don't need a, I, I don't always need a, a priest or a pastor or somebody. I just need somebody to say, girl, I've been there. <laughs> I need somebody to be like, man, I've been there. I was talking to somebody earlier today. It's like, I'm getting, out of, I'm getting out of the military and I'm afraid. Man, I've been there. <laughs> All of the last seven, eight years of my life, I've supplied, I've been, I, I, I've been dependent on this thing, and now it's going to be taken away from me. And I, man, I've been there. I was able to show him love in such a way that would encourage him. Are y'all with me today? All right, all right. So that's what feel I looks like. Uh, some, I wish some of us just had a little more feel in our lives. I wish some of us had a little more feel in our lives. Now, my, since we don't know how to define it, what we do is we flip-flop love. Oh, hear me right here. We flip-flop love so that, so that, that what, you, what you think, oh, hear, hear me right here. What, what should be feel you think it's this next thing. <sighs> the next word for love in the Bible is eros. Somebody say eros. Eros, eros love is romantic love. Some people you think you got arrows with. <laughs> Some people you wish you had arrows with. <laughs> it's really just feeling. And, and you, you somehow, because you, you, because, oh, hear me right here. Because love gives and something intrinsically inside of you wants to give to somebody you love. And so all of a sudden now your love is perverted because you give to them something that don't belong to them. Oh, Jesus. You give to them that really don't belong to you that you were supposed to be a steward of. But did I define arrows? Eros is, is passionate love. Eros is romantic love. Eros, uh, uh, Eros is, is, is hear, hear me, and you can write this down. Eros is, is skin level love. It's skin level love. And the truth is, oftentimes, again, you should have took your kids to church. The truth is, oftentimes, your idea for how you reward somebody who loves you has to do with a top level thing. A surface level thing. And now my problem with this is this will, this will get you in trouble. Because everybody ain't qualified for the gift that you present to them. Uh, are y'all with me on this? Every, every. People haven't done enough. There's a mountain you have to, you should. Okay, does that make sense? Eros is skin level love. It, it, is, it is a passionate love. Oftentimes it's, it's the heat of the moment sort of love. That's that, that's, that, that's that text. That's that crawling up the back of your neck. Ooh, girl, I think I love him. No. I mean, maybe, but it's this. It's Eros. And what, the problem with Eros is that there's no attachment with Eros. It's weak. There's no attachment. It, does, it, it won't hold on to you. That's why... Um, uh -huh. Heavy, I'm be <laughs> That's why tomorrow it won't matter. It's not strong enough to keep you. It's not strong enough to last. And a lot of times what I find is people get married, people get in relationships through, through passion. And then when the passion's gone, the London Bridge has fallen. You, 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 you can get married for passion. You ain't going to stay married for passion. Because, it's, uh, on, because the passion's not strong enough to keep you. There's going to be some days you wake up and you're going to be dispassionate. Yes. You're going to look to the other side of the bed and say, who is this? <laughs> Uncircumcised Philistine. Okay. <laughs> 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 
There is a dis. There is a dis. Eros is fine, but it, but it won't last. Are y'all with me? It, it's got to be something richer. It's got to be something deeper that 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 takes you on. That that goes past Eros. Okay, so the Bible refers to this word, this next type of love, as agape. Somebody say agape. Y'all know this word, agape. Y'all name y'all kids, little agape. Come here, little. Come here, agape. He bad. He the baddest kid in the children's church. Come here, agape. <laughs> agape means love without condition. Say that. Love without uh, One of my favorite uh, R&B prophets <laughs> to have this song, she said, loving you every day don't you look no more love without a limit she was lying she was lying <laughs> she was lying I mean it sounds good but the only none of us can have agape you are conditioned to love with condition you're conditioned to love with, with condition. The closest thing that we'll ever see to agape is the love of a mother and a child. Amen. Because that child can't do nothing for that mama. That child can't do nothing for that mama, but that mama loved that baby. Yeah. Yeah. She loved that baby. Yeah. She loved that. Sometimes I, 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 uh, I send my kids a text. So we have a little group text going. And I say, I really love you guys more than mom. And they write back, LOL. Why is that funny? <laughs> They're like, Dad, I mean, you might love us, but nobody loved you like your mama loved you. Nobody loved you. You could be a low down, dirty something. Nobody loved you. ever get to agape is the, is the love uh, of a mom. Uh, agape is love without condition. Love without limits. And Okay. I, I thought it hit me. What in the world was that? Okay. Alright. Let's mute everything with me. Okay. Alright. So uh, the only the closest thing you'll get to agape but, but whenever the Bible talks about love from the perspective of God it always uses the word agape. When it talks about love, you you know you should love your brother. You should love. It talks. It uses other words. It uses words like storge, love from a parent to a child, or a child to a parent, or feel a love for a brother or a brother. But when the, when 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 the Bible talks about love from God to us, it's without condition. That's the most beautiful thing in the world. And 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 though I can't hope to achieve that in my lifetime, I should be trying every day. To love people without condition. I should be trying to give grace in places that I know God, God has given me grace. I should be trying to give, to give patience in places where God has given me patience. And, and so I'm, I'm learning through God to love without condition. Now, some of y'all, y'all got high conditions. <laughs> you got, you, you have so, you, you can't even fall in love. Because you conditioned yourself to believe that love is a weight or a size or a height. Girl, I don't like no short man, girl. I just can't do it. I can't. He just. I look for me. I got convicted. It's going to be an altar time after the. We're going to pray for you. Come up, come, come up to the altar. But, it, but, but, but love is, is not a shape. It's not a size. It's not a body type. So, so I've told you what love is not. P Paul here tells us what love is. I'm going to read through this real quick and then we're going to get out of here. Okay? Okay? This is a participatory church. Just so y'all know. This is it's a conversation we're having. Right? I need to know you here. Amen? Amen. All right. So, Okay? All right, so, so Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and what he's trying to do is get things in order. See, the, the Corinthian church is, um, um, man, I, I, for some reason, the Corinthian church, they um, are prostitutes. They, they sleep around. They're real, like, uh, 
loose with their uh I'm not, I'm not doing a good job of this today. Some of y'all will sleep till just now though. You was like oh. They do what now? The Corinthian church is known for their proclivities in, in relation to sexual sin. They, they move in a certain way. And our problem, their problem was just like our problem is now that they use the term love in a way that wasn't really love. They use terms like make love. But, but, but uh, only love can make love. Only love can make love. Two negatives can't make a positive. Only love can make love. Did, are y'all with me? Yeah. Y'all better get the kids out here. Okay, so, so, so they, would, they would use these terms so loosely. And what Paul is saying is, no, no, y'all don't have no idea what love is. Y'all don't have no idea what love is. And what I found is that you can be 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 70 and not have any idea what love is. You cannot have any idea what love truly is. So Paul said, let me help you. He said, because some of y'all, y'all speak in tongues, but you don't have love. So it's useless. Some of y'all, uh, y'all pray real hard, but you don't have love. So it's useless. Some of y'all, you play your instrument real well, but you don't have love. So it's useless. So, and, 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 what, and what Paul is saying is that I need you to get what real love is. Because when you learn what real love is, you'll stop drinking imitation. Wow. I laugh at people. I drink a lot of diet soda. I'm trying to do better. Don't be judging me. People come in my office, I'm like, would you like a soda? They say yes. I hand them a soda. They crack it up like a, like a LeBron James Sprite commercial. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. They put it to their mouth. No, when I'm used to sugar, the imitation is nasty. <laughs> Am I? Next week, I'm going to talk about depression. So it, it, you can bring your kids in. I don't think, well, anyway. <laughs> but but, but when, when, when you really know what true love is, the imitation don't taste right. It, you already know. You know how you know the vibe. You know early. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help some single people. You know in the text conversation. This don't taste right. What is this? This is not this is not what I expected. And, and, and if you don't know what love is, you, you you'll drink anything. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, um, chapter four, Tab, I'm trying to be good, I swear I am. And I did not plan this to be the Mother's Day message either, but I'm trying to help some people in here. Okay, uh, uh, are y'all with me still? Verse number four says this, love is patient. Somebody say love is patient. If it don't look like patience, it don't look like love. If it don't look like patience, it don't look like love. Don't play me. If it's not, if you can't be patient, oh, hear me right here. If you can't be patient with me, don't. Come on, come on. Teach. I gotta move on. If it don't look like patience, it don't look like love. Love is kind. So, some of the people who claim to be the most loving are some of the most mean, vicious. Nobody want to talk to you. Mm, you just got a bad attitude. Like nobody want to be around you. Then you want to be a deaconess. Sit down. And not here. I'm correcting some other churches on the live stream. You, you got to learn. If you're going to be, if you're going to be loving, you got to be kind. You cannot subtract kindness from love. You cannot subtract kindness from love. That's why, uh, uh, hear me right here. This is why our churches are empty. Because we think we can have love without kindness. And we think we can correct something that we haven't even loved on yet. 
We think we can fix some behavior that we have. Oh, hear me right here. We think we can repair some behavior. Show them love first. The behavioral correction will come later. Gifts are instant. Fruit takes time. Some of us are gifted in certain places, but there's fruit. We got to wait on the fruit of the spirit and fruit always takes, gifts an instant. Fruit takes time. Fruit takes time. Do y'all, do y'all hear me? You don't plant it and pick it on the same day? Boy, I'm helping some churches, not this one, like some other churches. Okay, uh, uh, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous. Oh, uh, oh. Jealousy is relative to what you have that you think you can lose. Envy is relative to what you don't have that you think you should. If I didn't, if I ain't say nothing else, I think y'all already got it. Bow your heads. Jealousy is relative to what you do have that you think you can lose. The truth is, if I can lose it, it ain't mine. Just, just sprinkle that on whatever part of the food you want, okay? All right, all right. Jealousy, it, love is not jealous. Love doesn't have any reason to be jealous because what belongs to me, oh, hear me right here. What God says is mine is mine. I don't want none of yours, but I want all of mine. God says it's for me, it's for me. Do you understand that you can't do nothing about my destiny? Somebody should be happy about that. I need a 30 second praise break just because people who've been trying to stop your destiny, been trying to stop your purpose, they can't do it. Told my, one of my, told our team this yesterday. I'm, I'm Thanos. I'm inevitable. What you know? I'm, I'm in heaven. I'm going to happen no matter what. And you should know uh, what God plans for you is for you. You are inevitable. Stop worrying about what other people got. Rather, they got it. Celebrate them. When you see them drive up with it, you know yours is coming. Uh oh, girl, you look good in that. I'm going to look good in Girl, you look so good in that Camry. Wait till mine come, though. I ain't mad at you. We can be parking lot buddies. I'm gonna pull up right next to you. Got no reason to be jealous. Some, some of y'all don't have a reason to be jealous. Oh, I wish I got. Oh, oh. I remember one time I was. Uh, I, 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 I gotta be careful right here. I remember one time I, at my dad's church they used to have testimony service. And people would get up and testify. And it's a beautiful thing, but I, I can't trust y'all, so just wait. <laughs> we don't know. Not going to have no testimony service. Caprice, ain't going to be no testimony services. <laughs> up in here, up in here. But anyway, a man got up. Now, I had, I had me and my wife, we had, uh, we had lost a home. We went to buy a home. Uh, we put down earnest money, everything. We built from the ground up. We did the blueprints. We moved the rooms around, everything. We picking the cabinetry. And, and then um, th it, at the end of the day, that loan, that situation fell through. We was broken. We, had, we was broken. We had moved out of our house, moved in with my mama for six months, trying to get our ducats in a row. And then we still lost it. Ooh, we. You talking about upset. I'm on the piano like, give Jesus high. Give Jesus high. <laughs> Just mad, can't even smile. I was glad when you said unto me. Then at the testimony service, this brother got up, man, and I'm I'm not mad at him, but he got up. He was like, "Me and my wife just got a new house." Doom, 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 doom. Look, I gotta play it. Doom, 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 doom. They 
they running all around the church. I'm like, this is supposed to be me. Have you ever, uh, uh, maybe I'll just talk to the musician. Have you ever had to be a steward for somebody else's blessing? Have you ever had to be a, have you ever had to be a steward, a stand in for somebody else's blessing? Have you ever had to be a midwife when you wanted to be the wife? Oh, Jesus. Have you ever had to? And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I was so upset. And I said, God, I said, why does he get a blessing? And I didn't get no blessing. And God said, as clear as day, I, I heard it like the, all the music stopped, everything, because I'm on the stage when I'm having this conversation with God. It's like all the music stopped and there was silence in the room. And God said, do you want his blessing? Because I'll give it to you. Do you want his blessing? He said, are you going to be satiated with what he has? He said, because if you're going to be satisfied with what he has, you're going to miss out on all that I have for you. You're going to miss out on everything. Some of y'all have let jealousy make you miss out on blessings that belong to you. You've let hate and hurt in your heart make you miss out on everything else that belongs to you. Shoot. I, I went up higher, higher. I know, you know, you know, you know, you know. I took it up higher. Wow. I'm, dang, 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 dang. I'm ready to go now because I know I don't. I don't want his blessing. I want all of mine and none of yours. I said I was going to let y'all go. We might have to finish this later. Love doesn't brag. The, the King James Version said, love is not puffed up. All puffed up. All puffed up because you special and somebody else is not. All puffed up. Church people, the main ones. All puffed up. You should be grateful that you missed hell. You should be trying to get other people out of there. All puffed up. You see, see, the problem. Oh, <laughs> the problem with the puffing is this. It's fake. Because, because I know what's going on behind that puffing. Because it, it, it's, it's fake. I didn't learn this. I didn't learn this till I had a church. Angel, I didn't learn this till I had a church. Everybody's got problems. Even the people with the Louboutins on. That's been practicing this thing right here. This. They still got problems. It don't do no good to be puffed up because truth is, girl, you, you still got problems too. Okay? Love is, love is not arrogant. Okay? Love is not arrogant. Love is not unbecoming. Let me help you right here. Uh, if, if you a saint of God, walk like it. Talk like it. Act like it. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't be saintly around me and you're a hellion to everybody else. You wasting both our time. Don't give me a highly favored pastor standing on top with all things under my feet. And the, and the other people in the church can't stand you. Because you always mean. And you always ugly and nasty to them. You think they don't tell me? You come in there, oh pastor, today's message was so wonderful. Somebody asked you one question. Don't you see I'm talking to pastor? See? That's unbecoming. That's unbecoming. That's unbecoming. And I, and I wouldn't be your pastor if I just laid hands on you and didn't correct you. Tabby, I got to get through these because we're going to dinner. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Love does not seek its own. This is, I need you to get this too. It's two ways. It's two things to this. Love does not seek its own. Love does not seek its own. The first thing is this. Lo love does not seek its own glory. Love doesn't seek to glorify itself. Love doesn't seek its own. Lo love's, love's not drinking its own bath water. Lo love is not, oh, I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. I'm so this and I'm so that. Love doesn't seek its own. But this is the second definition. Love doesn't seek love. Y'all like, what are you talking about? 
Love doesn't seek love. See, see, it's easy to love people who love you. Love go to the person who you know can't stand you. And be like, hey, how is you? You doing all right? Man, it's good to see you. You losing some weight? Oh, oh you looking good, man. God bless you. Look, y'all can't do it. <laughs> you made up in your mind. I'm not going to make that one, Lord. I'm just going to, in the great by and by. <laughs> it's easy to love people who love you. Find somebody who don't, who don't, who, who don't like your rotten guts. And buy their dinner. Oh. Pops, I'll be sitting at the restaurant. I see somebody who don't like me. Not, uh, I, it's not many people who don't like me. I'm likable. But it might be a few. If I see them over there. Hey, that table over there. I got it. I got it. See, see if you don't like me, the Bible says for us to be above reproach. A reproach means this, the ability to point your finger. I'm going to be above your ability. When you, when you explain to somebody why you don't like me, you're going to stutter and stammer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. It's just something. I, I just don't know. But what did he do to you? All right. Well, he didn't really do nothing to me. <laughs> Has he ever been kind to you? Oh, yeah. He, you know, he always bought, he, he bought me stuff. He's taking care. Yeah. So why you don't like me? <laughs> it's just something. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show love to people who don't have the capacity to love me back. I'm, I'm gonna end right here, guys. I'm in right here. Listen, listen. <laughs> if more than one out of two hundred was saying no, then I would keep going. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm gonna end right here. All I need is five more minutes. Raise your hand if I can have five more minutes. 5, 10, 15, 10, 10, 10, 45. 45. Okay, 45 is enough. Thanks, guys. The rest of y'all save yours. Okay? <laughs> it's hard to love people who don't have the capacity to love you back. I want to switch this really quickly. I, I want to switch. I want to talk about my dog. Some of y'all have heard me talk about Chloe. This is, a, I, I, number one, I'm not like a dog person. Like, I'm not a, I'm not a dog person. Some of y'all are dog people, you know. You love your dog, your dog be all on your mouth. <laughs> Get down. I'm not a dog person, but my family wanted a dog. My, my, my wife, my kids, they wanted, they wanted a dog. So I said, okay, well, let's get a dog. And they got a dog. And, it, 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 you know, she was fine. She, she was fine. But she didn't like me. In fact, I mean, she didn't like me at all. She, I, I think she didn't think I was in the family. <laughs> like, if I would fuss at one of the kids, she would go... <laughs> When I would come home, for, like, when I would come home and I would, I, I, I would, she would hear my keys jingle and she would start barking at me. This my house. I pay the mortgage. I buy your dog food. She just didn't, she had an issue with me. And because of that, I had an issue with her. Nobody was around, I'd be like, get out of here. Bad, bad, bad now. She'll go do Soon as Savon come home, she'll come right out of that bed like, nah, Savon's here. He gonna protect me. She was, she was so, and I, I mean, but she was a fixture in our family. She became just like a part of our family. I never understood that from dog people until I had a dog. She was a real, like, actual part of our family. And I knew this because she started getting sick. She started getting sick. And we were taking her to, like, doctors. <laughs> but we didn't have no TRICARE. <laughs> we didn't have no Red Cross Blue Shield. We didn't have nothing. So you got to pay cash at the doctor. 
Derek, you got to pay cash at the doctor, at the dog doctor. They're like, will that be cash, check, or credit card? I'm, and I'm going to get up. You know, you pay for every visit. I'm in there. 300, 500, 600. Ooh, my hands are shaking. I'm trying to remember my pen. Like, oh, my God. This is, you got to decide between the electricity and the medicine for clothes. She got sicker and sicker. One day, one day, one day, I was home. I, I work from home a lot. She, I, I was home, and she came to the stop, top of the stairs, and she whined. She whined, and I was like, "What's wrong with you? You need to go out." And she was like, "You know," she didn't say yes, but everybody was like, "She said yes." Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was silly. Okay. She whined, but I was like, "Okay, come down." I'll let you out. Come down. She was too sick to come down the stairs. So I had to go up the stairs. And I walked up the stairs. Now I'm working now. You don't like me and I don't like you. But I'm going to carry you down these stairs. And I went over to the door and I set her down. But we had stairs on our back deck to go down again. So she walked over to the back deck stairs and then she looked back at me. I'm thinking, are you serious? <laughs> All I hear is like a TV show. I, it could cut to every time she barked at me coming through that door. I started to just get down. <laughs> no. Y'all so mean. Look at this. It's about love. I carried her down the stairs. I waited for her to do her business. I picked her up again. I carried her back up the stairs to the house and then back up the stairs to the movie room where a bear was. And then every day after that, she never came down the stairs anymore. I just carried her. Every time she walked to the step, I picked her up. She, I carried her down the stairs. I walked to the step. I would keep, this, was our, this was our thing, twice a day. I carried her. She couldn't do nothing for me. She didn't have nothing to give me. There was no exchange to be made. She couldn't bless me. She couldn't give me money. She couldn't pay me. I served her because I loved her. And that's what love looks like. It looks like walking up and down the stairs with 70 more pounds than you were attempt, intending on carrying. It looks like walking up and down the stairs. See, 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 you won't understand that till you understand that God's been carrying you. The whole time in this story, you saw me as the hero. But I'm not the hero, God is. And the reason I could carry Chloe is because God's been carrying me. And the same grace that he has given me. I, 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 and so when I, when I deal with you, when I, when I deal with you and, and, and you haven't been righteous to me, when I deal with people who I know don't like me, when I deal with people who I know can't stand my rod and guts, I go back to that place where I can, I, I can carry it. I'm strong enough. I can carry it because God carried me. I can carry it because this is my relationship with God when I couldn't do anything for him. Oh, Jesus. When I couldn't do anything for him, when I couldn't bless him, when I couldn't help him, when I could barely walk myself, he carried me. And because of that, I extend grace to everybody I know. Because I know that there is a season that I had to be carried. And there's 200 people in this room. And you've all had to be carried. So it shouldn't be any problem when you have to carry somebody. When you have to extend grace to somebody. But she was mean to me. So, you've been mean to some people. So you have to be carried sometime. Let he who is without sin cast the first. The closest thing you'll ever get to that is a mama. I want to I pray right now, but I want to pray for some mamas because the truth is this. You've been carrying some burdens that aren't yours. You've been carrying some stuff that aren't yours. I want to help you with something else, too. Uh, mama, you did, you did good. Your season for serving is over. 
they got to grow up. Your season for serving help, yeah, yeah. Everybody can't clap to this. Some of y'all don't know. You got to wait till your kid is 26 or 27 or 28. And they still call you. And No, I'm, I'm freeing you today. That season's over. God said, I got them. I'll take care of them. I'll watch over them. Stop listening. The Bible says, he who watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. If he's awake, you should get some sleep. If he's awake, don't be woke all night worrying about that grown child. They'll be all right. They be all right. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your child. I want to pray for your families. Some of y'all have been carrying some burdens y'all you didn't intend to carry. I, I, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for each and every one of you. In fact, if you can bow your heads. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer today or you believed it for the first time, I believe that you're saved today. I believe you're saved in the pardon of your sins and you can start to walk down the path of 1 Corinthians 13 and I know that, that gifts are instant but fruit is not. So I don't expect everything in your life to change at once but you have to know that you're changed inside your heart and inside your spirit. But I want to I wanna open up this altar. I, I, I'm going to do something different. They're going to be not like this. But I'm going to open up this altar. If you say... Pastor Dante, I've been carrying something that I don't intend to carry. I want you to lay that weight down today. The Bible says, cast your cares upon Jesus because he cares for you. I want to know who will trust God enough to cast their cares down on today. If that's you today, the singers are going to sing a song. If that's you today, we're just going to stand at this altar. If that's you today, you can come on up and get prayed for. Don't worry about the person who's on the left or the right of you. It doesn't matter. The truth is, they, didn't, it, 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 they, they can't fix nothing in your life. Find somebody here. There are people here. In fact, y'all can go to those people. You don't have to wait on me. There are people here. They will pray for you. They will pray for you. They will pray for you. Stop worrying about who's next to you. Stop worrying about who's next to you. And start thinking about the fact that God loves you. 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 You can come on here. You can lay it down. You can lay it down. If it's you today, come on up. Come on up. You can lay it down. love of God oh it chases me down fights till I found leaves at 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it till you give yourself away oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God
Gosh, I'm, I'm taking a second. I'm looking all, all over this room because I see healing on some faces right now. I see deliverance on some faces right now. Oh, and you look so beautiful. You look so amazing. And God's not, oh, I just feel like saying this to somebody. God's not through with you yet. I know you, I know you through with you. And I know they were through with you. But God told me to tell you he's not through with you yet. He's still got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's not done with you yet. So hallelujah, if you believe it. Do me a favor. Have your seat. Have your seat. Have your seat all over the house. Have you have a seat all over the house? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers in the house today. So wonderful to see you all. Uh, my name is Pastor Kevin. I'm the student ministries director right here at God Chasers Church. And I'm Pastor Adriana, and I am so amazed to be here. The Holy Spirit is here, you guys. Can you yes. feel it? You sense him. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. To see him, to feel him, to feel him move. There is freedom in this place. There is freedom in this place. There is freedom in this place. God is so good. PD said something today. He said that we were spiritual firefighters. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has come down and he has touched us. And we are experiencing the residue of that word. Why? Because God wants us to love like him. And I believe that that word today broke something in our love. It broke something in our love. And we are experiencing the love of the Holy Spirit coming in. So if you can feel him, give God glory. Give yes. God glory. Give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We are so glad that you are here on this wonderful day. Uh, it, it is our time of giving, our tithe and offering time. Amen. Yeah. Give me, give me a favor. All the givers, all the time, make some noise right now. Yeah. If you are a partner of God Chasers, make some noise right now. We are so grateful for all of our partners here. There are three ways you can give here at God Chasers Church. The first way you can give is uh, actually through these wonderful uh, ministry leaders that you see in front of you. If you need an envelope, uh, please raise your hand and wave it in the air like you just do care and they will definitely come to you and give you an envelope amen the second way you can give is through uh, uh, uh online at give that connect that uh i'm sorry give that god chasers.cc or connect that god chasers.cc you can give both of those ways and then the third way is outside uh right there at our wonderful kiosk or a little uh area at a connect table you can give that way as well remember if you're writing a check million is spelled with the m and, and billion is spelled with the b you never know who's in our crowd, but we're so grateful for all the givers. We're so blessed to have you partner Amen. with us at God Chasers Church. Amen. Last way that you can give is 84321. Text 84321. Our family have talked a lot about what we've gone over the last year, um, but we've gone down to one income, and God has been so faithful. Even when we did not have enough, we decided and committed in our heart together to say, God, we are going to give you the full 10%. And God has been faithful through promotion, through blessing, through financial, through billings, through, through bills falling off, all of that. But I want to, this is my favorite part, to share stories with you guys about the power of God and how he moves in that, right? And it's not necessarily always our stories. I love to share the stories of our family here, right? So there is a person here who has her own business. And she ties and she serves with her time, her time, her treasure, and her talent. And she has a side business. She's a hairdresser. She has a side business on the side. And she was praying in our Jeep where we were just believing God, right, that she was going to sell a certain amount of this product so that she could hit a certain rate. And she did. Why? Because she is sewing, sewing into the house, sewing with her time. She's doing that. Not only that, God blessed her with hitting that rank, which uh, provided income for her, but she got to go on an all-expense trip. All-expense pay trip, right? An amazing trip. That is the power of God, y'all. I share that because it's not just our stories, but it's your stories as well, that when you sow your time, your treasure, and your talent, you will begin to see God work through trips, through washer and dryers, through your car working, whatever it is. God is miraculous. So I encourage you guys, if you have not stepped up fully to that 10% start, 7, 8, commit your tithes to the Lord and watch Him work. Amen? Amen. One of my favorite scriptures we all learned this growing up was John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He For God so loved the world that He gave. Hear me, if you love God, you'll give. I know, I didn't get a lot of amens right there. If you love God, you'll give. He so loved you that he gave all that he had. So guess what? He's only asking for 10% of what you have. Uh, uh, he, and he's looking for some cheerful givers today. So when you give, yes. Yes. give cheerfully. Don't give begrudgingly. Don't give with anger in your heart. Give with a cheerful heart and watch what God do. Hear me on this. Watch what God will do to a person who gives with the right heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to pray. Please bow your head and close your eyes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for giving first to us, God. You are the ultimate giver, God. We can't outgive you, God, because you gave it all, God. But Lord, we give you back a portion of what you have given to us, Father. Lord, use this gifts, use these gifts, God, to bless your kingdom, to advance your kingdom, to help people, God, to, to move people, to, to, to expand your kingdom through God Chasers Community Church, God. And we'll be ever so grateful, God, for what you are doing in us and through us and for us God because we know that the best is yet to come we love you and we thank you in Jesus name amen all right and here's what you need to know hey God chases I'm Mario and first I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and here are your weekly news and notes Join us for our weekly Bible study. Who's excited for Church in the Park? 
Service will be May 26, 12-12 at Lady Bird Johnson Park. Not only will it be a great opportunity to fellowship with our Freedom Life family, we'll have food, fun, and games. We'll have optional courses, three-on-three basketball, and more. So join us and share an amazing word with our pastor, Dante Banks. is growing and we want you to know that our G kids are important to us as we continue to pour into their spirits. So bring your kids and tell your kids to bring a friend. That's it for this week's news and notes. For more information, go to connect.godchasers.cc and select the announcements tab. celebrate God in here. So GC3 U starts back on Wednesday. <laughs> on Wednesday at 7 17 p.m. Okay. I'm excited too. I'll see you there. Okay. So for Church in the Park, if you would like to sign up to bring a side dish, we will have sign up sheets directly um, outside after service so you can stop by and sign up. You can bring your famous uh, baked beans or your famous potato salad or your famous bag of Lay's or your famous bag of soda, okay? It all works, it all works, you can bring it. Amen. <laughs> and then directly after service for every mom, we have a dessert table set up so feel free to stop by after we after we exit and enjoy a sweet treat on, on us. Amen. 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 Real quick, so GC3U starts back this week on Wednesday. Um, what is GC3U? GC3U is our weekly Bible study. Every uh, few sessions, we have a just a time that it's just I'm I'm gonna be there. We're gonna be teaching. Pastor Kev's gonna teach some. And, and we're going to just really dig into the word. Some of you guys need to be there. You need to bring your notepad. <clears throat> you're a new Christian. You're trying to figure some things out. That's the time to come. If you're an old Christian, you're trying to figure some things out. You need to be there as well. Okay, so uh, that's this Wednesday. On the 26th, again, I'm going to say this one more time. If you come here at 12 o'clock on the 26th, ain't going to be nobody here. Ain't going to be nobody here. We're going to be at the park. Okay, we're going to be out there just getting it in we even gonna bring these guys out here so they're gonna we're gonna be at the park we're gonna turn up and have a good time for jesus amen we're gonna take we're gonna take what we do in here outside amen 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 and finally i haven't done this in a while so i'm gonna give some people some opportunity if you said today i heard the voice of my pastor i heard the voice of uh, uh, break that music listen you need somebody who is speaking into your life you need somebody who is praying for you. You need somebody who you know cares about you. And, and, and the truth is, I want to be that person. I, I do. I want to be that person. I want to pray for you. I want to connect with you on a faith level. And if that's you today, I want you to do me a favor to take all your stuff, to stand up, to come up here and shake my hand and say, I want to be a part of one of the most amazing churches in San Antonio. If that's you today, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. If that's you today, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We start over here. Tell me your name, man. Marcus, everybody say, hey, Marcus. Marcus, do me a favor. Follow that young lady over there. You see her way over there? Y'all might want to wait. We're going to have some. Got to get all these people, okay? Y'all go ahead, Marcus. You good, you good, good, good. Tell me your name. David. David. Everybody say, hey, David. Hey. David, welcome to God Chasers, man. Follow that young lady over there. Follow that young lady. I know this young lady. <laughs> say your names. Caprice and Derek. Caprice and Derek. Everybody say, hey. I've been waiting on y'all. God bless y'all. Listen, listen, I believe something. I'm just going to say this right now. These people going to matter at this church. Okay. Think I'm playing if y'all hear me right here. These people, you going to look up in six months. You better be on your. Okay. All right. Love y'all. You look good. <laughs> follow, those, follow that young lady. Love you, man. Hey. 
tell me your name. Lexi. Lexi. And DeAndre, everybody say, hey, Lexi and DeAndre. Listen, welcome to God Chasers. God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming out. Look, follow that young lady right there. Look, can we clap for all the new members on today? Uh, is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Then stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on. We're going to get up out of here. I thought you left me. I want you to grab somebody by the hand. I want you to squeeze that hand. I want you to pray for them like you want them to pray for you. Listen, everybody in this building is going through something. I want you to pray. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I want you to pray right now. I want you to help them carry their burdens. We're going to carry each other's burdens at God Chasers Church. Squeeze that hand. Let them know you're alive. And then I want you to take 30 seconds and pray for them. Start now. One, two, three, go. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you honor and glory. I thank you for each and every person whose hand that I'm holding. I thank you for their lives. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. I thank you for how you're delivering them and how you're carrying them and how you're walking them through. And I thank you for all the mothers, Lord Jesus, every single mother, Lord Jesus. They are an example of your love. Lord, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Could you hug three people on your way out? Can you hug three people? They might need it. You might need it. Can you hug three people on your way out? Can you hug three?